For the last few days, I've had one question come to my mind over and over again, and here it is. What does the ending song of Sweeney Todd actually accomplish? Attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale and his eye was odd. Stephen Sondheim loves bookending his musicals, ending with the song he began with, but usually that serves to show that something's changed about the song or about the people singing it. Take Into the Woods, for example. Into the woods, but even so, I have to take the journey. Yes, the characters sing the same song in the last moment as they do the first, but it's different now. The characters have matured, developed. They know what the woods are, why they need them. In the first song, there's this line. The way is clear, the light is good. I have no fear, nor no one should. In the second, it's replaced with this one. In Sweeney Todd, though, it's just kind of the same song twice. Attend the tale of Sweeney Todd, his skin was pale and his eye was odd. Every time I watch one of Stephen Sondheim's musicals, I get sad for at least an hour, and that's for two reasons. The first is, I can't believe he's dead. It sounds silly, but I grieve for him in a way I can't imagine grieving for any other artist I've never met. There are these great YouTube videos I sometimes watch where Sondheim teaches his songs to musical theater students. And the look on his eye when they get something right always fills me with a strange dread, and I wonder what it would be like to meet him. The second reason that Sondheim's musicals upset me is that I'm sad I can't make work like he does. Stephen Sondheim, one of the best artists in the last century, I'm sad I can't be him, that I can't even quite figure out what the last song of Sweeney Todd is there for. Recently, I went to the Bucharest Museum of Contemporary Art. This strange museum nestled into the massive parliament building, the second biggest government building in the world, I'm led to believe. It's a pain to get to the museum, and when you do, it feels off somehow. There's nothing around, no restaurants, no people. This picture I took doesn't communicate anything, but imagine a museum stuck deep in the bowels of a building. It doesn't feel like anyone should go there. The museum is great, but there's one one piece there that stuck with me more than any other, and it's called Reconstruction by Dorina Horatow. It's a dark room filled with cages filled with dead leaves. You can smell the dead leaves and you think about how often the cages have to be refilled to have that smell. Every so often you can hear the sound of an axe. I wish I'd stayed in the room longer, captured the space for three hours straight. Instead, I have here 20 seconds. Seconds that do not convey just how large the room is, or how dark it is, or how much you can smell the leaves, or how piercing the axe is. What is the axe doing here, exactly? Is it cutting down the woods we're in? These cages, dead metal trees in a dark room? Will this space be destroyed soon? Or does the axe precede this piece of art? Woods were chopped down, and all we have left now is dead leaves and the memory of chopping. You think about the name of this piece, Reconstruction. Is this what reconstructing something means? Killing a forest and arranging it in an order we can understand, and failing and being left here in this strange room? Sometimes I feel a bit ashamed of these little Joel videos. Not for any real reason, really. I enjoy making the videos, but I have this feeling every time I make one that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm good at making these videos, I think. They are more what they are supposed to be than anything on Big Joel has been recently, and that's especially true because for the last three months, everything I've made there has been difficult to understand and messy. I have so many comments on my last video telling me they just didn't get it. I can't blame these comments. Commenters. I mean, to be clear, I do absolutely blame them and wish they would shut up. Just watch the video, I think. Who cares what you get and what you don't get? But I can't blame them really, though, because I kind of agree with them. That video didn't live up to what I wanted for it. The audio is bad, and I think it drags sometimes, and in the first 30 seconds, I misquote a character from a movie I've seen five times in a video about that movie. <laughs> 
I just barely got out of Hiroshima and now I have to deal with Godzilla? A shame that will haunt me until I'm dead. She said Nagasaki, not Hiroshima. I agree with them. I don't totally get the video either. Little Joel is something that people can just enjoy and I enjoy it too. And more and more, I wonder what the real channel is actually here for. I often think about taking some time off to make videos, not because I've burnt out or don't like making the videos, but because I don't think I'm a good enough writer to accomplish what I want to. At least, not yet. And that's a confusing problem to have, because what I want is to make work that doesn't answer for itself. Videos that don't simply try to reconstruct their subjects, that don't try to chop down a forest and give us cages filled with dead leaves. Toby talks about how you have to send human beings three times through the grinder to make them meet. And then he turns to the audience and becomes the teller of the story. Smoothly. Smoothly. Attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. And everyone Sweeney Todd killed comes out and joins him and sings the song that was sung at the beginning of the musical. It's obvious why that's different. It's obvious what the song is there to do. Sweeney Todd, the demon of Fleet Street. 